Video game adaptations tend to result in far more misses than hits, especially if they try and cram a 15 hour plot into a single film. And because of this, whenever I hear of someone attempting to adapt a game, I set my expectations very low. But there are exceptions to this rule, ones that manage to completely blow me away by their presentation and clear love of the medium. And one of these that just recently wrapped up is Netflix's Castlevania. Hi my friends, I'm Mike and welcome to the Lions Lounge. Today we'll be talking about the Castlevania animated series as a whole, and we'll be making some cocktails inspired by it. Let's get into it. Castlevania premiered on Netflix in July of 2017, and it's pretty clear that they were testing the waters with it, as season one had only four episodes. But after it quickly received widespread acclaim, Netflix announced that a second season was already in development. And these two seasons adapt the plot of Castlevania III, Dracula's Curse. Here we follow the monster hunter Trevor Belmont, the speaker and magician Saifa Belnatis, and the half-vampire son of Dracula himself, Adrian Tepish, otherwise known as Alucard. Together the three fight through vampires and other creatures of the night, and their ultimate enemy, Dracula a near-invincible vampire who plans on eliminating all of mankind as revenge for his wife's murder. Action-wise, the first season was good, but because of how short it was, you wanted more, and season two delivers. And this growth in the series' animation would continue all the way through to its final season, where you can really feel them pouring all their love and energy into every frame. It's incredible to see the growth of this show watching it from the very beginning. Overall, the first two seasons tie up the battle with Dracula in a very satisfying way, while also introducing new characters like the Forge Masters Isaac and Hector, and the vampire lady Carmilla, all of whom play much greater roles in seasons three and four. They also do a spectacular job in showing how Dracula has fallen from a curious man, fascinated in humanity by his wife, to an increasingly deranged shell of his former self with the last few episodes of season two being especially touching. Now, before I dive into the second half of the series, I wanna make a cocktail inspired by Dracula called The Vampire's Tears. So this drink you're gonna build into a double old fashioned glass. To start, you're gonna add half an ounce or 15 milliliters of simple syrup. Next, three quarters of an ounce or 22 and a half milliliters of amaretto. This is an almond liqueur. And next, two ounces or 60 milliliters of bourbon. Add a big ice cube and give it a stir for about 30 seconds. And lastly, using the back of a bar spoon, float one ounce or 30 milliliters of a red wine. And then I'm gonna garnish it with two maraschino cherries. And there you have the vampire's tears. Cheers. Whoo, that is a rich and complex cocktail. Immediately you get the red wine, which in my case, I used a Merlot, which is a full bodied wine, so you you really feel it, but then it slowly starts to give way to the amaretto and the bourbon. So you get those those sweet notes from both of them and then the, the slight spices from that bourbon and the nuttiness from the amaretto. So it's really sweet, but also kind of tart because of the wine. Yeah, so as time is going by, the wine is starting to incorporate with the rest of the ingredients and it meshes actually surprisingly well. I didn't know how wine and bourbon and amaretto would go, but I'm pretty happy with this. The appearance of the drink is also very nice. I like the red wine, how it's just floating on the top because of the different densities. It kind of gives it a very striking look that really is nice. I, I really like how this looks. Overall, this is a really great cocktail that I recommend you give it a try if you can. Take my advice and use some full-bodied red if possible, and you won't go wrong. So I'm gonna group seasons three and four together, as there is a sort of through line in how the story of season three ties right into four, with new characters and relationships introduced and resolved by the end, these being the Council of Sisters and Saint Germain. At the end of season two, Hector is essentially captured by Carmilla and brought back to her castle to be used to make her an army to subjugate mankind. However, as Hector is resistant to this, one of the council members, Lenore, forms a relationship with him to convince him to help out. Though it's clear she's no slouch when it comes to defending herself. Meanwhile, Trevor and Sypha encounter Saint Germain, an alchemist and scholar who is attempting to open the infinite corridor a dimensional gateway for an unknown reason. 
a goal also shared by a creature known as the Visitor that has brainwashed a local town's monks in order to release monsters and seemingly Dracula as well from hell. Saint Germain is a pretty interesting character, and his performance given by legendary actor Bill Nye makes him a huge highlight of this season and the rest of the series, as we learn more about him and his motivations. Alucard during this time has remained in his father's abandoned castle, and is slowly starting to lose himself in his solitude, until he meets two vampire hunters from Japan who have come for knowledge on how to better defeat the monsters and decides to train them. Which, it's sad to say, doesn't really end well, but does lead into him meeting Greta, the leader of a small village wishing to help her people escape from a growing onslaught of vampires. This all comes to a head when it's found a vampire known as Varney is attempting to resurrect Dracula, and Alucard, Trevor, and Sypha are once again reunited for a climactic showdown in the castle. This, alongside the battle at Carmilla's castle, are the major highlights of season 4 and of the series as a whole, with the animation in these episodes being the best seen so far. In particular, I loved the fight with Striga, one of the Council of Sisters who goes out to battle in a suit of day armor that pays homage to the Berserker armor. Plot points with Hector, Lenore, and Isaac are also resolved, and the fight between Isaac and Carmilla is to put it mildly, incredible, as is the final boss I won't spoil here that Trevor must defeat. It was a fantastic way to cap off the series that ends in a heartfelt but enjoyable conclusion. So lastly, I'm going to leave you here with a final cocktail that I found a recipe for that I just really wanted to try, which is called the Holy Water. This one is sort of a tiki cocktail that incorporates various juices, a demerara rum, and cognac. To start, take a cocktail shaker and add one ounce or 30 milliliters of a Demerara rum. Next, one ounce or 30 milliliters of cognac. Then half an ounce or 15 milliliters of lime juice. Half an ounce or 15 milliliters of lemon juice. And just a quarter ounce or seven and a half milliliters of grapefruit juice. Then three quarters of an ounce or 22 and a half milliliters of Orgeau. And lastly, three dashes of Angostura bitters. Add some ice and shake for 12 seconds. Then crack some ice into a highball glass and strain it into the glass. Leave a little bit of room at the top. Now take a discarded lime peel and drop it in the glass. Add a sugar cube and soak it in a quarter ounce or seven and a half milliliters of green chartreuse. Now, if you've seen my videos before, you know what's coming next. Take a lighter and carefully light the sugar cube. If you want to see the flame more distinctly, you can sprinkle some cinnamon over top. Make sure to blow it out before you go to drink it. And there you have the holy water. Cheers. Ooh, this is really refreshing. All those various juices in the Orgeau definitely helps contribute towards the sweetness and the tartness, but you can still taste that Demerara rum, which is what I love. You get those those sweet demerara notes, and it's it's amazing how well it incorporates with the rest of these ingredients. The cognac is honestly not very present. I'm assuming it's just making it taste sweeter. And with that green chartreuse, I can definitely identify just a tiny bit of herbal notes to it, which does not offset the rest of the ingredients here. It's still very good. Overall, this is a really delicious tiki cocktail, and I love the ones that incorporate flame because it just gives it something a little extra. Today, we talked about the Castlevania series and made two cocktails inspired by it, the Vampire's Tears and the Holy Water. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more like it, I'd really appreciate it if you'd like and subscribe. If you have any cocktails you'd like me to make based on your favorite series, let me know in the comments below. If you want to see what I make outside this channel, follow me on Twitter at Mr. Space Lion, or Instagram at Mr.SpaceLion. But thank you so much for stopping by the Lions Lounge. I've been your bartender, Mike, and I hope to see you next time.